What's up, guys, and welcome to the Web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. Welcome to the comic universe. I'm Dr. J. I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and I should know. I've printed it out myself. You miss me, folks? I'm back. That's right. We are back once again. I am sorry for missing out on, like, a week and a week's worth of stuff and content, but luckily for y'all, DPZ and C-dubs held it down, but I am back and in full HD. That's right. So what happened was... My laptop, Babs, God rest her soul, finally gave out on me, and now I have to, you know, upgrade, so I upgraded to a full PC, and now, you know, we're here, we're, we've got decent editing software now, and full HD recording capabilities, so of course I am back once again, in full force, better than ever, we have the technology. So... Obviously, it's February, we've got like a few days until Valentine's Day, um, but I wanted to do a whole thing where, uh, you know, I did one episode of I Ship It every week for the entire month of February. Obviously missed out on the first week because of computer issues, but I will make up for that by probably posting two episodes this week and then one a week for the next two weeks, uh, but yeah. The first one we are kicking off with is one of my favorite comic book ships of all time. No exaggeration. Dinaru, a.k.a. Nico Minoru and Carolina Dean. And those of you who use the show per, uh, pronunciation of Carolina, you're wrong. Just saying. Like, the author himself says Carolina. So it's Carolina, y'all. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Let's get into this. Why do I like this ship so much? This ship, that's of course an LGBT ship, and an LGBT ship that consists of one of the characters who is an actual, literal, living rainbow. Well, first off, I absolutely love both of these characters individually for different reasons. Nico, I've always had a thing for the goth girls, and... I I was reading this book at, like, Runaways when it first came out when I was, like, maybe 12. Not even 12. I wasn't 12. I was, like, because it was 2003. What am I saying 12? I can't do math. Uh, in 2003, I was, like, 8. So, yeah, I was, like, Molly's age, even younger than Molly when I was reading Runaways. But I was, like, oh, my God. Nico and Carolina would be so cute together. Um, and... You know, you could see it throughout the first volume. And Carolina clearly had a thing for Nico, but, you know, Nico wasn't reciprocating. Nico was pretty much, you know, kissing every other boy you know, on the team besides Chase. I mean, because, you know, her and Chase never had a thing. But, regardless, so there were always these subtle hints that Nico really didn't know herself and she wasn't really comfortable with herself throughout the entire series. I mean... Her whole staff of one operated via her having to cut herself, which also kind of, which also connected to her own personal, you know, self-harm and self-loathing and that whole character arc. Um, now eventually when we get to, uh, we fast forward all the way to the Rainbow Row current run of Runaways, Nico, she's finally discovering herself more and learning more about herself now that she's kind of had time to reflect and be alone. And she is finally ready to not only accept those feelings for Carolina, but reciprocate. And she realizes that, you know, out of everyone in her life who has been there for her, the one person that she can always count on, that she needs in her life, that she cannot be without is Carolina Dean. Now, Carolina, man, what can I say about Carolina? She is a ray of sunshine, both figuratively and literally. Her powers run off solar radiation. Um, but, man, she is what I consider to be the heart of the team. Now, there's several arguments to who the heart of the team is. A lot of people say it was Gert, because, you know, Gert's death is what, you know, really kind of fractured the Runaways in a way. Um, a lot of people say 
the, the heart of the team is Molly because she's the youngest and she's like everybody's little sister. But to me, it's Carolina. Because Carolina connects with every single member of the Runaways. But especially with Nico. Nico and Carolina just understand each other. They're able to open up to each other, be real with each other, and just connect on such a deep level, and it's just so sweet. But the thing about Carolina that just makes it extra special is you really get to see a lot of Carolina's journey all throughout the Runaways, and her figuring out her sexuality, and who she is, and what she likes, um, and going from someone like Zavin, who changed for her, and, you know, changed into the form of a woman, to be with her, and then she moved on to Julie, who Julie herself was figuring out her sexuality, and they were also a good couple, Julie Power from the Power Pack, um, and this was where, this was really kind of the peak of Carolina here, where she was, where she really was comfortable in her own skin, comfortable with her sexuality, completely out and free, and Nico seeing that, and wanting that, wanting something like that, really kind of is what drew her more to Carolina, and she's like, I need that in my life, and that's kind of the, the, the realization she kind of got, and when they connect, when they finally connect, it's beautiful. Now, obviously, I want to touch on the TV show for a little bit. They fast forward through a lot of the um, extra stuff from the comics, and they get together pretty early on, and Nico and Carolina were a thing uh, pretty close to right off the bat in the show. Like, um, by the end of the first season, they are together, and it is handled really well. The actresses both have amazing chemistry, and that's definitely a strong selling point of The Runaways. I have a lot of um, smaller problems with The Runaways in, ter in terms of like pacing and story sequencing, but the one thing I think they handled extremely well were the relationships, in particular, Nico and Carolina. Those two, like, they were so sweet and innocent, like, was never just a, oh, let's make out type of thing. Every kiss they shared was sweet and tender, and you could tell they cared about each other just by how they looked at each other and looked each other in the eyes. And it's just so sweet. But at the same time, it's not a perfect relationship. Obviously, they're going to fight. They're going to argue. Because, you know... A gay couple is no different than a straight couple. Newsflash to, uh, you know, some of you guys who might, you know, be living under a rock. But they have their struggles, they have their issues, but they're willing to hear each other out. They're willing to listen. Because that's the thing about the Runaways. They are her family. And, yeah, you know, Nico and Carolina, they just fit so well together. And that's why they are one of my personal favorite ships of all time when it comes to comics, especially the teen heroes. Um... Sister Grimm and LSD, yes, those are their actual superhero names. They don't really use them anymore, but those are their technical code names. Although I really wish Nico would start using Sister Grimm more again, because I really like the code name Sister Grimm. But, yeah, their relationship is just so well done. Um, this current run really captures it well, because, like, yeah, they were, they were kids when it first started out. So, like, of course, Carolina was still figuring things out, and Nico was definitely in denial for a while now. Um, but here, they're adults, and, it, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, you, you don't have to just be a teenager to have to, you know, be able to discover your sexuality. You can be a 20-something and, you know, start to figure out that you're bi. You don't have to, you know, sexuality is a very fluid concept. So, I, and I really like that they address that, like, just because, you know, Nico was into dudes most of her formative years doesn't mean she can't be into girls now. It's not like she just suddenly like, oh yeah, now I'm just a little lesbian. No, she's bi. Like, and that's perfectly okay. That's perfectly fine. That's natural. You, you know, you develop the, the curiosities as your tastes change, as you grow. And again, it's just a very natural, very interesting progression, and I really like it. And again, Nico and Carolina just complement each other so well. Darkness and light, man. They got that nice little yin and yang thing going on. So, of course, I love it. But let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Are you more familiar with the comics? Are you more familiar with the TV show? Which depiction of the ship is your favorite? Let me know all those thoughts and feels in the comments down below. And don't forget to Hulk smash that subscribe button like you mean it. And... 
that like button as well. We are so close to our big goal of 1K subscribers, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys who support the channel. And you know, to those of you who have joined um, the universe since I've been gone, hey, how you doing? Welcome. I'm Dr. J, as I said in the intro. Um, you'll be seeing more of me now that I'm fully operational again, um, and I will be doing more ice ship it. Like I said, I'll be doing one other one this week, and then you know another one next week, and then one more for the final week of February. Um, just to give you guys a preview, my next one is going to go to the world of animation, and we'll be talking about Aang and Katara. So look forward to that. But until next time, guys, I'm Jay from Mr. Reviews for the Comic Universe. And until next time, I hope to see you in the universe. Peace.